What is up everyone? Welcome back to my channel and today we are back with another episode of Freelander and in this one it's a very special episode because we are back at the Tour de France. We were there in season one, we only managed a dismal seventh place in the GC but we are back with a vengeance as a two-time Grand Tour winner. So then let's take a look at the parkours ahead of Mikel at this race let's go through the stages and you can see we do start with a team time trial 27 kilometers we fairly important in the gc then we have a few short hills and some flat stages as you can see in the first week mainly for the sprinters however stage six and over 50 kilometers of flat individual time trialing we're going to lose minutes on this stage so we need to make up time elsewhere Stage seven and we have some more short hills, but then stage eight and finally we're in to the mountain stages, three and a half thousand meters of climbing, uh, a crazy difficult final climb right there. Stage nine and look how difficult this stage is, 5,000 meters of climbing and none of the climbs are particularly long. You can see they're all about four, five kilometers. That is gonna be such a fun but difficult stage on stage nine. Similar story on stage 10, but we do have a downhill and flat run into the line onto stage 11 and we have some massive mountains. You can see we're going up the Tourmalet to finish and then a short downhill to the line actually should be very interesting. Stage 12 and it doesn't get any easier. You can see five and a half thousand meters of climbing. Look at some of these mountains we will conquer. So back to the sprint stages on stage 13, stage 14, and we have a shorter climb to the line. You can see it's six kilometers long. Stage 15, another one for the sprinters. And stage 16, a few short hills, but I don't think there'll be many gaps in the GC in this one. That will change on stage 17 though. You can see over 200 kilometers and you can see some big mountains yet again. Stage 18, and we have the final TT of this race which means we have over 100 kilometers. You can see with this 46 kilometer time trial, we'll have about 120 kilometers of time trialing. Doesn't particularly suit Lander. However, this one is a big mountain TT, so that will suit us a lot more. Stage 19, and we go to Alp Duez, another very difficult stage, shorter one this time, but finishing up Alp Duez. And then the final climb of the tour, we finish on the Galibier. We of course do finish on Champs-Élysées, the GC already decided on the Galibier. So then let's take a look at the squad we take to the Tour de France. Lander, of course, leads the team looking to complete that triple crown we so desire. We bring Kwiatkowski, Dylan Toons and Jan Tratnik as our main helpers. They are the three I selected. We also have Filippo Zacanti, Luca Pivenik, Sonny Corbrelli and Phil Bauhaus, both for the sprints as well. As we know then, we get underway with the team time trial and Jumbo Visma are the favourites. It will be interesting to see who is at this race. So the Tour de France is underway. Let's take a closer look at the start list and you can see Philippe and Remco, who we faced off against at the Dauphiné. Van der Poel is here, we've got Roglic, and Dumoulin alongside De Plus, who's very good now for Jumbo Visma. We've got Bookman, Bernal, Froome, Kreuzvik for Ineos. Pogacar is here for Etihad as well. Of course, the Giro winner from this season. We have Caleb Ewan, Seth Van Marcus here, Mads Pedersen with Mollema for Trek Segafredo. We've got T.S. Benut leading Sunweb. Adam Yates here for NTT. Thibaut Pino is back for FDJ in an attempt to win the Tour de France. We have Trentin, Bargui. I mean, you can see the rest of the squads. Maybe Bardze, who has proved to be a dangerous rider this season. Also Jack Haig alongside Almeida for Mitchelton Scott. So clearly, as we expected, a very strong and interesting start list at this race. Here we go then. Bahrain McLaren set off for their time trial at the Tour de France. And you will notice the three riders I selected, Quieto, Tratnik, and Dylan Toons, all very capable time trialists. So hopefully we can put in a decent little time here. So first time split right now, and the team are in sixth, 22 seconds down on Jumbo Visma. So Jan Tratnik leading the team up this hill. Now Sonny Corbrelli at the front of our train. 
and do we improve at this second time split? So you can see we stay in sixth, over one minute down on Jumbo Visma though. So looking at their squad, to be fair, Van Aert, Voss, Dumoulin, De Plus, Roglic, what a time trial squad they have at Jumbo Visma. You can also see that Lander just sat on at the back because we are struggling for energy right now. So we're just coming into the final and you can see a lot of the team are now struggling. Tratnik leading us across the line. Toons is done. Lander is done as we reach the finish line. It's not ideal at all as we catch BNB Vital Concepts and we finish in eighth place after that shambles at the end. And we're two minutes and 18 down on Jumbo Visma. What a time by Jumbo Visma then. They destroy everyone in this opening TT, almost beating every squad by a minute. FDJ, the only team within one minute in the end. And it will be Lawrence De Plus in the yellow jersey. And you can see we are two minutes, 18 down, 68th overall. It's actually not too bad. So bar the Jumbo Visma boys, Thibaut Pino gets off to a very good start. Same with Bookman. Uh, we've got Mollema who's got off to a decent start as well. Ineos 1 minute 40 down and they have a very strong team. So 2 minutes and 20 isn't so bad. Especially when you consider that Garrett Thomas 4 minutes down. And I think we also have uh, Pogacar losing 3.5 minutes as well. On to stage two then, and it's pretty flat throughout, but the final is hilly, so we do need to definitely be aware into the final kilometers. The first breakaway of this tour up the road then, and you can see the five guys right here up the roads. Worth noting also some very strong winds at the moment, and they're blowing right across the road pretty much for the entire stage, so maybe we can use this later in the race. So we've just had the intermediate sprint and I have chosen this moment to try and accelerate at the front of the peloton. We have Bauhaus Akanti and Pibinik on the front at the moment, seeing if we can maybe create some echelons. Here we go then, we do have 25 briefly on the front. Look how stretched out this group is behind us. Let's try and push these guys to 95. I'm even gonna put Tratnik on the front. I think Lander can look after himself. And look at these groups behind, plenty of groups being formed right now and then slowly coming back together again. Let's try and keep this going. So currently we have 68 riders who are two minutes ahead of everyone else and 104 riders are behind and a massive, massive gap to those guys. We've got Toons, Quieto and Colbrelli all behind. Sadly, I couldn't quite control them. Uh, which is why they're stuck behind. Anyhow, we're going to try and continue pacing and maybe create some more gaps. So it's quick step pacing like absolute madmen on the front. I'm willing to live with that. And we have 18 riders at the front. Let's make sure we stay here. As you can see, our teammates are going out the back and we have 23 briefly on the front. I'm going to drop these guys, you know. I think they can't really help me. Maybe Bauhaus can protect me, but these guys... Really struggling, it seems. I'll just put them maintain on 60 into the final 5k of this stage. And you can see the two, uh, the two climbs coming up. Let's go up to 90 on this hill. Make sure we come to the front with Lampert on the front. We have 14 riders in this front group right now. So two and a half k to go. Lander can use his energy gel. I'm going to pace on 85, try and come towards the front of this group. As Gino Marder on the attack, I'm going to go up to 90, 92, 95 as we enter this climb. We have Sagan, Vanderpool is here as well. I'm going to take Vanderpool's wheel into the final meters. Vanderpool accelerates like an absolute madman. We just need to sprint for the line right now. Can we potentially finish on the podium today? Matthew Vanderpool takes it ahead of Sagan. We will finish in, I think, the top 10 behind Ewan, Higita, Damar, and with Marder as well. Are any of these gaps going to count behind? Crosswind mayhem on stage two of this Tour de France. And sadly, De Plus, Pino, and a few of the GC favourites did manage to close the gap to this front group. But after Avenipal, we have 57 seconds back to the likes of Alaphilippe, Bardet, Iran. Roglic is down here. So as you can see, Chris Froome, Young Ghouls, we have definitely dropped some very good GC men. Almeida as well, 78 Mountain. Uh, that was a very, very nice start to this tour with Banal getting dropped. Uh, we'll keep going. We've got Godou, uh, probably missing quite a few guys, but you can see the rest losing time today.
And so we move all the way up to 21st in the GC right now. However, Lawrence De Plus still in yellow. On to stage three then, and on paper, a very basic flat stage that will be contested in a mass sprint. Let's see and let's hope for some crosswinds though, and maybe we can cause some more mayhem. So again, we have 27 kilometer an hour crosswinds, but with this direction of the final, could be slightly more difficult, I think, to create some gaps. So we're now onto this graveled sector. As you can see, we've been over quite a few already and they are very, very narrow, making this a very difficult final. I've got a few guys pacing on the front at 90. No gaps just yet, but maybe some will form if we continue pacing. Okay, then coming towards the final 5K in this stage, and you can see the final is pretty much flat. And we now do have some splits. I expected them to take place a while ago. So I'm pretty surprised they've taken this long to form. Anyhow, now some of the sprinters are moving up. I'm actually going to try and follow Ackerman. Can I do that? Doesn't seem so. We'll just try and follow Tratnik for now. I think he's going to die towards the line though. Maybe Caleb Ewan. Can we move to the, to the Australian's wheel? Doesn't seem so. Let's make sure we stay with these guys at the front. Just try and sprint for the line. Who's going to take it up the road? It's a crazy, crazy finish today. And you can see coming towards the line, Pascal Ackerman versus Fabio Jakobsen, who just takes it ahead of Caleb Ewan. We will finish nicely in the front group as well. So this ended up being a pretty standard sprint stage. No real gaps created either. There was one withdrawal and you can see David Vanderpool having to leave the race. No change in the GC. Like I mentioned, we're still in 20 seconds. On to stage four then and another flatter one today. However, we will see what the situation is with the wind. So we are underway then with this flatter stage. However, we do get a minus Tuesday and you can also see no real crosswinds today. So probably one for the mass sprint. Okay, then 7K to go in this stage. You can see again, there is a split in these groups. The wind did pick up a little bit, but I didn't really think it was strong enough to try anything. Zacanti from our team also was in today's break. They were caught though very, very easily. We can use our energy gel, I do believe, at this moment in the race. 4K to go. And you can see we do have this very slight uphill right now, uh, but it will soon flatten off a slight downhill as well, just before the line. And I'm just trying to stay towards the front on Luca Pibinic's wheel. Into the final 2K, we've got Jakobsen, Jill Bears here with Damar, Peter Sagan as well. Some very good riders, of course. Let's go up to 99 with Pibinic. Round this very twisty finish to the stage. We'll sprint with Pibinic, who falls right in front of us, along with a bunch of other guys. Oh my. Kreuzvik has gone down as well as Quirto. Bauhaus as well from our team. What a finish that was. Damar takes it in the sprint. Luckily... Lander stays on his bike, but a massive crash in the final. So we actually did finish in the top 10 right there. Toons also eighth for the team. There was one withdrawal. You can see Grant Anderson will have to leave the race sadly and no real gaps. So anyone who did fall did get the same time, of course. So moving through the first week of this tour, another flatter stage today, quite a few flat ones in the first week. So not too much we can do with Lander, just make sure we stay in position and potentially see what happens in the sprints. Into the final 10k then, you can see world champ Phil Gilbert on the front briefly. Now a Venapool on the front for quick step. And it is all together, no splits being created despite these pretty strong wins and this super high tempo set as well. I'll even pace with Tratnik for a little bit, see if maybe we can create some gaps right now. So we now have 4k to go in this stage. Tratnik pretty much done and Quickstep absolutely dominating things at the front. Uh, Jakobsen is going to surely be in a fantastic position for this final. And we do now have 69 to the front. Tratnik pretty much done as well. I'm going to try and follow one of these sprinters right here. See if we can maybe do that. Uh, we'll even drop back to follow Ewan. We're not going to do the pacing for him. Uh, today won't be for Caleb Ewan up the road. Who takes it in a sprint? Jakobsen looking good. Sagan too, but Jakobsen takes it ahead of Peter Sagan. We will just finish in this main group. And it seems just 55 will finish in this front group. So this is the stage we have been absolutely dreading. 55 kilometers of flat time trialing today. 
Askreen and Vanderpool quick step will dominate things I expect, but also the likes of Roglic, Van Aert, De Plus, Doomland, some very good time trialists at this race. We're going to lose minutes, it's just about how many minutes we lose in this stage. Hopefully it won't be more than I'm hoping, maybe three minutes, but even that is going to be difficult today. So Lander gets underway and I'm not going to lie, I am absolutely terrified with this stage. You can see Quieto has lost two and a half minutes to the current leader. We're going to lose like five minutes. We're on a minus one day. This is going to be very, very ugly. So next time split right now, you can see Van Baal has now overtaken us into this second split. He is one minute 20 down. That means we are three minutes and 46 seconds down already with 23 K still to go. So third split up next, and like I said, really not looking forward to this. You can see Van Baal still up the road, some way ahead of us right now. And I've tried to use some extra energy and we're four minutes, 56 down in 76th position right now. So here we come then into the final 2K. You can see we're pretty much out of energy as well. Can't even push it into the final kilometers. Lander has now collapsed with 1K to go. And I'm not looking forward to seeing this time at the end. Oliveira with the best time still at the moment. We're going to be six minutes down, I think, on Nelson Oliveira. Let's see. Across the line, we lose five minutes and 55 seconds. Oh, my. So then the previous yellow jersey holder and still yellow jersey holder, Lawrence De Plus, wins the TT just six seconds ahead of his teammate. Pretty close amongst the top kind of seven or eight riders. How far down are we? Are we in the top hundreds? 96th, six minutes and three seconds down. Mikhail Lander finishing amongst the likes of Gilbert, Seth Van Marker. That definitely wasn't the day to have a minus one day. And so in the GC, we started 21st and we are now down to 62nd position, eight minutes and 21 down. Right, so if we win this Tour de France, it's going to be comeback of the century because this looks like an impossible task right now. Okay then, stage seven, and we do at least have a little bit of hills today. We do finish on this 1.5k climb average of under 5% though, so doesn't really suit Lander enough, not quite steep or long enough to really give us an opportunity. Anyhow, we'll make sure we stay to the front and yeah, I don't know, try not to lose any more time. So on the biggest stage of the first week for Mikhail Landa at this tour in the TT yesterday, we choose to get a minus one. However, the next pretty basic looking transitional stage with not too much climbing, we choose to get a plus two. It's just typical, isn't it? You can see I'm pretty salty and not quite over that performance in the TT yesterday. Anyhow, we will see how we do today. So splits are definitely being created in this group now with 13k to go. And I do believe that is world champ Phil Gilbert on the front for Lotto Suzao. And down to 90 riders on the front now. 85 as more guys struggling with these climbs. Quieto and Toons absolutely nowhere so far at this tour. And we are now coming into this climb. So let's move up on 85, maybe even 90. Just try to make sure we're staying to the front, if nothing else, which we're doing pretty much fine for now. Uh, still a lightning pace on the front, so can't really try anything. As you can see, just making sure we stay here and still 40 seconds to that group up the roads. So with that climb, we now have 60 riders in the peloton. And to be honest, I expected it to be a little more selective than that. I'm coming to the front. I'm going to follow Emmanuel Bookman. You can see some of the guys out the back right now. Tade Pogacar amongst them as well. So let's come to the front. Can we do a bit of pacing? 5k to go. I don't particularly want to with that climb coming up. But I do want the pace to be high with Pogacar behind. Anyhow, that's not really up to us. We don't have any teammates. Gilbert coming back to the front for Lotto Sudal. Up the road, Stannard has been dropped by Oliveira and Denz. Bauhaus here to protect us as well. Into the final climb right now. Caleb Ewan. Oh my, what a lead out by Lotto Sudal. We're just trying to come into this final climb. Up to 95 right now with Lanza. Nico Denz trying to hold on ahead of the chasing sprinters. Who will take it up the roads? We will see very shortly. Will it be for the Peloton or heartbreak for Denz? It is heartbreak for the German. 
Peter Sagan gets the win ahead of Caleb Ewan. How unlucky for Nico Dens today though. And so if we take a look at some of our GC rivals, you can see some of the main ones up here. Interesting to see if Remco can maybe challenge for it. Obviously Roglic, Dumoulin, Bookman are up here early on. Kreuzweig as well. If we scroll down though, Pogacar five minutes down. Pino three and a half minutes down. So in fairness, we may be eight minutes down, but plenty of guys have lost minutes already in that TT. Okay, so as this has been such a difficult first week of the tour and we're struggling so much and there's been plenty of flat stages as well, let's throw in stage eight as well today. And we do have the first real mountain of the race finally for Mikhail. Average of over 8% for 12k, so it's going to be a difficult one. Hopefully we can maybe make some time back. So we're well underway as you can see already today and we do get a plus one. Not quite the race day we're looking for to be honest at this race. Quieto though on a very nice plus five day. That is the form we need if we want to come back in this Tour de France. Anyhow 15 men up the road you can see them right here including Alexei Lutsenko. We have Emric Mass as well and Lutsenko at eight minutes potentially um, I thought about going in the breakaway as well today, but I assume they wouldn't let us go up the road. But let's go up the road, eight minutes down. Maybe we could have tried it. So 28 k's go. I've done my best to conserve as much energy as possible today. And still just over 100 riders in this peloton. So hasn't been too tough today, but the pace has been there and not too far up to the guys in the break either. So we are now on this super narrow and very, very difficult penultimate little climb right here, up to over 15% right now. Tratnik doing a brilliant job just to stay with us in this group. Let's try and take position right now. Try and recover as well into this downhill. And there are some splits taking place, as you can see. Pretty much ideal for us, I would say. And we now have 20 in this group. Let's try and recover though, while some other teams are willing to pace before that big final climb. Okay, so the pace is absolutely crazy right now as we come into this final climb. We have 26 riders in this group and I've already noticed the likes of Avenipool and Rigoberto Aran are behind um, and I expect a lot of GC guys really feeling this. I hope so anyway because we are really struggling already with 10k still to go. So you can see guys just dropping out of this group all the time. We are now right out the back. And I honestly, I don't want to go faster than 75. I'm going to try and set my own tempo for a little bit as Van Bala is done. Toons almost done as well. Can we push our way back into this group just about for now? Uh, but honestly, with this super steep final coming up, I want to save as much energy as possible for that moment. So we now already have attacks on this stage. Thibaut Pino on the attack alongside, I think, T.S. Benutz and Sergio Hagita. Let's take position. Molima is done, Godou and Haig all done right now as Foss is done as well. We have still De Plus and Dumoulin in this group. No Primoz Roglic from what I can see either. And we now have 5k to go. Quieto still here to help us. Bardet is done, A is done as well. And look how small this main GC group is now. And so Pino seems to have gone way too early on this climb. We still have Quieto to protect us. Hagita up the road with Benut. I'm going to use my energy gel. A is done. Thomas is here for Astana. And Quieto is pretty much done. I'm going to try and continue pace on 70 even without Quieto. Maybe try a little attack as we start and catch these guys. Um, I think that could work quite nicely. Apart from Hagita blocking us. I didn't really intend for that to happen of course. And now Bookman on the attack. I'm not going to try and follow that though. Let's just try and pace on 75. We have Kreuzweig and De Plus trying to follow as well. I'm trying to pace my way up this climb. As you can see, 75. We are now joined by Pogacar and Adam Yates. But this is turning into a uber selective day at this Tour de France. So 2k to go. Pogacar is now done. He cannot hold the wheel. We have Bookman well up the road. As you see, De Plus and Kreuzweig trying to hunt him down. And we're just behind them. Kreuzweig. Can't hold the wheel. De Plus doing his best to hold on to yellow. And Bookman looks done. Oh my, what a ride by Lawrence De Plus here. I'm going to drop this to 80 again. 
Can we catch those guys at the very front of this race? And uh, we're going to gain minutes back on some riders, I do believe. But can we take the stage win today? Up to 90. We'll try and come past them right now. And it's going to be so close. It's going to be so, so close. But what a chance for uh, for redemption right now. And we're going to get it. Mikhail Lander beats Bookman and beats Lawrence De Plus. What a finish to the stage that was. What a difficult final. And we get the W and some massive, massive time gaps back to the rest. What a way to finish a very difficult first week of this tour. Mikel Landa winning stage eight, the first win at the Tour de France, I do believe in this playthrough. And look at the time gaps right here. So I've got to take a closer look into these time gaps. You can see the top 10, Pino losing three minutes, Dumoulin almost four minutes down. We've got Iran, Froome, Venepool over five minutes down, the likes of Roglic losing seven minutes, but now is eight and a half minutes down on this stage. Oh my. Landa clearly one of the strongest on the climbs alongside Bookman and Lawrence De Plus, who we went up against at Paris Nice, of course. We also have Kreuzweig looking good, Adam Yates, Pogachar, and maybe Garrett Thomas as well. So we finish today's episode finally making it into the top 10 just about, but we're still 8 minutes and 15 down on Lawrence De Plus. This man looks so, so strong and could well be on his way to his first tour. And it does sound bad being 8 minutes down, but in the top 10, and we're only 2 minutes behind a top 5 position, so we're actually not doing too bad. We're just about recovering from that horrendous TT. Anyhow, guys, that round out the first episodes of the Tour de France, of course, the final race in this playthrough. And hopefully we can finish strongly in the final two weeks because we've pretty much cleared most of the flat stages, most of the time trials as well. So the only way should be up from here for Mikel. But like I was saying, drop a like on this video if you enjoyed today. Subscribe to my channel if you are new. And I will catch you guys in the next one. Thank you.